What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with my final review for Kenobi, um, it's now streaming on Disney+, Plus. notably because we now have the final episode available for streaming. I've had a chance to watch it a couple of times, so I thought I would give my initial take review of the episode. So I will state off the, right off the bat that if you have not seen the episode, then definitely hold off on watching this review because there will be spoilers. I'll be outlining some of the ups and downs of the episode, some of the callbacks to various other properties and things like that. So with that being said, overall, I thought the episode very, was very well done. Much like most of the other episodes in the season, we it's kind of split between two parts. You have the first part being the um, impetus for whatever happens in the second episode, half, and the second half is the resolution for the current situation of what's going on. So overall, the first half of the episode is dedicated to the fight between Obi-Wan and Vader. Um, we have an opening scene that very much mimics what we see in the opening scene of A New Hope with Vader Star Destroyer going after a rebel ship. So in this case of Kenobi, it's just their ship that they're using to escape um, from the path and get to the next planet. We find that the hyperdrive is not working. The shields are not going to last as long as they want. Roken essentially needs more time. So Obi-Wan uses himself as bait to distract Vader, land on the planet, and start that fight. Leia and Roken and the rest of the Rebels are against it, but Obi-Wan is using this as an opportunity to say that all the good people are protecting and hiding Jedi, so as a Jedi he wants to do his part to repay them and thank them and continue to protect them. So he's going to use this as a distraction, so regardless of what happens to him, they'll survive, they'll be the future, and they'll be able to move on. So we have the fight, which was also broken into two parts. The first half definitely went to Vader, where he is overpoweringly strong um, and he thinks he defeats Obi-Wan and buries him in the pile of rocks. We would have expected Vader to say something along the lines of having the high ground or he has a high ground now, now or he's no longer the student because of the high ground, something like that. But he doesn't do that. Um we find that Obi-Wan is using the force push kind of force power to protect himself. Um, he's originally having the re um, memories of Obi-Wan's fall and turn to the dark side. But as he gets the memories of Luke and Leia, Leia's happiness, her optimism, youth and all that, and he realizes that he needs to protect them, he gets his motivation, power, energy, faith, and all of that back, gets capes, and gets into another fight with um, Vader, in which point we basically get what I want to call the ultimate version of Obi-Wan. So he goes all out, he's kind of like Obi-Wan Unleashed, and attacks Vader, cracks his helmet open, um, lifts a whole bunch of rocks, to, which he uses as an assault against Vader, which was a very great shot and an entirely really good sequence, which was followed by my favorite sequence of the episode in that we get a look under Vader's helmet. We see the duality, the conflict, and all of that. So it starts with his eyes being the evil Sith eyes, but then his slowly fading into the black um, Anakin eyes. So we see that Obi-Wan is kind of getting through to him, but um, Anakin remembers his anger, returns to the Vader form. Um, his eyes return to the evil Sith version. And during this time, we have uh, the color of the hue of the lightsabers reflecting on his helmet with part of it being blue, part red. And as he transitions back into being evil and full Sith, the hue um, changes over back into full red. And we get a very heartfelt apology from Obi-Wan that he understands that he failed Anakin and couldn't do anything and essentially leaves him here. Um, Vader ultimately returns to his castle, gets repaired and all that, where we get a uh, precursor scene to what we see from Episode 6, where em em Emperor Palpatine asks if Vader's thoughts on um, Obi-Wan are clear, and his, or his, if his feelings on Obi-Wan are clear because he seems extra agitated. Um, this kind of Emperor's way of saying that he's spending too much time on a singular purpose and he needs to focus on the picture at large. So 
the Rebels versus Obi-Wan kind of thing, but this mirror, mirrors um, Vader and um, Anakin, or Vader and the Emperor's speech from Episode 6 with Vader's feelings being conflicted um, over Luke. So, all in all, a good sequence here. Um, once Obi-Wan leaves the planet, he realizes that Luke is in danger because the third sister has gone there to kill him to kind of live up to, I guess, what Vader expects of her or maybe to get back into the good, into his good graces and all of that, but is unable to do so. Um, this whole sequence is set up also to sh um, have Owen get the limp that we see in A New Hope. So we have Owen and Baru protecting Luke, having him escape, which is a scene that kind of mimics the scene in Rogue One where they have an escape plan and in like in Rogue One at the beginning where... Um, Jin has that escape plan and has to go to a hatch. Um, I presume that Luke probably has a similar thing, but was unable to get there because Riva destroys the ground beneath him to knock him out. But in the fight sequence between Baru, Owen, and Riva, they basically they hold their own enough as far as Baru and Owen go, but uh, Riva realizes that Luke's escaped and goes after him instead. Um, but this whole scene was a setup to have Riva's redemption arc with Obi-Wan that she wasn't able to kill Luke because he's not like uh, Vader and that she was unable to, by not killing Luke, she redeems herself and is also honoring the her fellow younglings who were killed by Vader and she was unable to save because she saves Luke's life and realizes that she is not like Vader and she is not who they tried to make her to be. So her path is now open and she can do what she needs to do to redeem herself. Um, from here, that's the bulk of the um, action sequences. So now we have, so by this time, Leia has already been returned to Alderaan. So we have um, Obi-Wan returning to return her droid to her and give her a very heartwarming talk about the nature of her parents. Um, so Obi-Wan does tell her that he can't tell her everything to protect her, but she has Padme's um, kindness and tenacity, or kindness and a couple of other traits, but also balances that, that out with her father's personality and traits, like his ferocity and tenacity and... Not, he doesn't say stubbornness, but he essentially lists a couple of feet, um, traits of both parents and lets her know that she has both of their qualities and abilities so she's going to be a great person essentially she uses padme's traits as how she was and then anakin's traits of how he was pre-vader so all in all good stuff he leaves them to let them know that and let her and bale know that if they ever need him he'll, they know where he'll be to set up the whole thing message with um leia the message being sent by leia and bale at the beginning of a New Hope, and at the end of Rogue One. Um, the only other thing that I... One thing I forgot to mention earlier is that the other shot that I liked in addition to Vader's um, split helmet shot was, the, it was Vader sitting on his throne. So when the camera is panning out, it looks like a very much like a Vader POV shot um, through his eyes. So if you think back to Episode 3 when they're putting the helmet on to Vader and you're looking out through his eyes, that's kind of what the shot looks like um, in Vader's castle. So there's that. Um, so to round out the episode or this particular review. Um, overall, it was a good ending to the series. We have it set up. So I like the compare and contrast in this episode between Luke and Leia. So Leia has the benefit of growing up as a princess, having that education, balancing out her um, um, personality and traits and everyone treating her like an adult. So while Luke and Leia are being raised by a family that cares for them in an, an, as far as an adoptive situation goes, Leia has that maturity to lead and grow up. So that's why her maturity and balance is there from such a young age. Because they treat her like an adult, she is very observant and percept perceptive. But rather than treating her like a child, um, they treat her like an adult. And even though she, could, she has that childish immaturity, she has that balance of maturity as well. On the flip side, Luke and 
I want to say that Leia has the stronger side of the personality of Padme and Anakin, whereas Luke has more of the pull of the dark side because he has more of their emotional side. So at the ending, like, for example, Luke has more of Padme's sadness, Anakin's looking through the future things of what could be, might be, and all of that. So the dark side is a harder pull for him. So for me, at the end, when Obi-Wan tells Owen that he was that Owen was right and Luke just needs to be a boy. It's essentially, um, he's giving Luke that opportunity that he needs to grow up a little bit, experience more. And to me, that shows that he that Obi Wan is acknowledging that they took Anakin in too, not necessarily too late as far as being too old, but he still had the attachment of his mother. But by growing up and maturing a little bit and losing Owen and Beru later, he had that maturity to overcome his sadness and the potential darkness and move on from there. So while Luke had a later start, he that grew that built into his personality to give him that ability to resist the darkness a little bit better. Even though it was still within him, it gave him that understanding that he has to balance the light and dark and that it's always going to be a part of him. Um so with that the of course we're gonna have the final scene which we can't gloss over in the form of um, Qui Gon showing up to let Obi Wan know that he is now ready to um, begin his training. Obi Wan exclaims that he's been looking for Qui Gon, and Qui Gon lets him know that he's been there all along, and Kenobi actually needed to be willing to um, want to began the training that he wasn't ready so the best representation of this in my opinion is at the end of the clone wars in the i think it's a two or three episode arc with yoda and him beginning his force ghost training that he had to overcome his hubris and um, unlearn what he had learned and be ready to learn and take in new things and become the student again so in Obi-Wan's case, he had to let go of the guilt of losing An um, Anakin to Vader, falling to the dark side, becoming a failure, and actually wanted to learn and be ready to become that student again. So now that, or with over the past six episodes, that's essentially what we have Obi-Wan learning to do is learn to let go of the past and be ready to learn. And now that he's at that point, he knows that Leia's going to be okay, Luke's going to be okay, um, he's potentially left Vader alone, or essentially the Emperor has told Vader to stop worrying about Obi-Wan and focus on other needs of the Empire. Um, Obi-Wan can now begin his training as a, or to learn the final mysteries of the Force from Qui-Gon. So overall, I like that ending. And while if I want to say that Kenobi was supposed to be a six part limited series. It does feel like they're setting up to have a season two where we spend more time with Luke growing up, maybe even learning about Leia, but it feels like now that Leia's okay and they're going to leave her alone. Um, for now, Obi-Wan can focus on uh, Luke and saving him from the Tusken Raiders, learning about his piloting skills, but also learning about the four so we could have another for example six episode um story arc where um obi-wan learns from qui-gon has to go on various trials like yoda did in order to learn those various mysteries whether he stays on tattooing or not he could potentially do the same thing as um uh, yoda and go to those various planets to uh, complete his test he could potentially even go to dagobah and um, uh, learn from Yoda and use Dagobah because it's strong on the force, something along those lines. But essentially, it feels like they could set up a season two of Kenobi, do another limited season event, and we see spend more time learning about those mysteries of the force. So, with that being said, overall, I really enjoyed the episode. It was very well done. It rounded out a lot of things. It tied together episode three with the um, original trilogy, notably episode episodes um, four and six. Um, I don't think, oh, actually there, and the, it does actually also resolve one item in episode five where um, when Obi-Wan and Luke are talking about, and I want to say episode five, but it could have been six where Obi-Wan is telling Luke about um, how Vader killed Anakin 
from a certain point of view. So whatever that whole situation. And we have the line in the in Kenobi where Vader tells Obi Wan that he that while Obi Wan thinks he killed Anakin, it's actually Vader that killed Anakin. So I liked that bit of resolution just from a single line. So all in all, a good they did a lot in six episodes to resolve a lot of that stuff, uh, finish up the backstory, and tie together a lot of um the prequels or tie a lot more of the prequels to the original trilogy so the only thing left really in my opinion would be how obi-wan learned um how to become one with the force maybe even do a two-part thing where they go back and forth between um yoda and obi-wan so while we do have the obi or the yoda trilogy in the clone wars um that feels like it's um uh, yoda beginning to um learn some of that stuff and be uh, okay to do that so um or be willing to become the student and learn and all of that so while he was he's a lot older so he needed that extra push kenobi was the student a lot more recently um relatively speaking as far as age so um it feels like he doesn't have to do as much of that so um he could potentially start at Dagobah go to various planets and um begin or learn a lot more of that stuff in its his own six-part series and potentially even talk to Yoda but that's not necessarily a requirement or anything like that so overall if I was to grade the episode I'd probably give it a solid 90 to 95 percent there's very little that I saw wrong with the season um I figure with even a few more episodes like if it was a 10 episode limited series they could have explored some of those mysteries of the force in one season but it feels like they're also setting it up to have a second season so very little I thought was poorly done. The only negative I thought overall with the season was the set designs looked very, they didn't look very well hashed out. So it looked very, they looked, looked fake to me compared. So compared to like, um, Book of Boba Fett and the Mandalorian, the sets in Kenobi didn't look quite as good as I expected. They looked very small and set like versus realistic. So. On our rewatch, I'll see if my opinions change. I'm going to give episode six another watch as well, or part six another watch to see if it's any better or worse. But overall, I didn't really like the sets, but everything else was very well done to the point where the sets are the least of the items to worry about in the show. So definitely worth a show, uh, worth watching. All the episodes are sub one hour, and we have that one episode that was like 35 minutes, but... Overall, a really easy watch, so you could even get it done in one day if you wanted to binge all six episodes, but definitely a good show worth watching, and it actually makes me now want to go and rewatch uh, Rogue One and A New Hope. Un at least A New Hope for sure, but um, even Rogue One as well as a slightly different point of view and then tie everything together with A New Hope. So for me, a definite watch, definitely very well done, and... I can't wait to see more. I know we have um, Andor coming later this year. I think the Bad Batch as well. And then I forget what the release schedule is for The Mandalorian and potentially another season of Boba Fett. But uh, we have Bad Batch for sure later this year and Andor as well. So I look forward to seeing those shows as well. But that's all there is for this review. So look out for a full season review as well. And a more, slightly more hashed out and um, streamlined review on the podcast this week. Um, so subscription links and past episodes and all that can be found on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. The Twitter is at PatelN01 and the Patreon for, um, bonus content, ad free content and all of that for the podcast can be found at patreon.com slash PatelN01. But thanks for tuning into this particular review and until next time.